Hello, and welcome to Wallace's Mysteries of Antiquity. In this series, we will explore together the enigmas of our distant ancestors and try to come to tentative conclusions about them. In this video, we will be exploring the newest mystery of the Great Pyramid, a mysterious chamber on the north side never known until the 21st century. It was discovered by a process known as myography. Sensors were placed within the pyramid in key locations and allowing a radial density map to be created. Muons are fundamental particles with negative charge and are large cousins to the electron. They are created in our atmosphere when high energy particles from deep space collide with it. They exist only for a short time, so short that they only make it to Earth due to relativistic effects, but they largely go through stone, making them perfect to take pictures deep inside it. In March of 2023, less than a year ago in the making of this video, the Scan Pyramids team pushed an endoscopic camera through a crack in the masonry, and humanity got its first look inside a new chamber of the Great Pyramid since Howard Weiss discovered the King's Relieving Chambers in 1837. This space, located here, has apparently remained sealed since construction, which is remarkable considering how close people of the past came to discovering it. While this is what the entrance to the pyramid looks like now, it is believed to have been smooth in the past, and these giant chevrons were hidden. Not only were they hidden, but the ones we see now weren't even the outermost layer of them. Four additional layers of chevron once stood in front of the chevrons we now see. Whether by previous exploration or earthquake, something removed four out of the five blocks that once covered this space. So many things could have happened to reveal this space, yet it has remained preserved for us in the modern day, accessible only through a crack in the stone large enough to snake a surgical camera through. I set out to bring my own expertise to the exploration of this chamber. The grainy, dark video teased at hints of barely noticeable structure, and there are questions about what exactly we are seeing here. Until now, this was the best image we had. Someone had found the best frame from the endoscopic video and cranked up the contrast. Low resolution, grainy, and out of focus. I have knowledge of more advanced ways of teasing out details and started working with four main goals in mind. 1. Identify this weird discoloration between the two chevrons. 2. Identify this black splotch. 3. Identify the different types of stone in this image. And finally, get a clear image of the geometry of this rear wall. I must first explain the process I used, as if I'm going to be basing my analysis on my own image, you need to understand exactly how I produced it. I have 20 years of experience working with rasterized images and even video streams, so I wrote a custom piece of software to deal with the three main problems we have in the Scan Pyramids video. The first problem we have is noise. Between successive frames, a lot of pixels lighten or darken. This is purely coming from the sensors themselves. Getting rid of this and retrieving true color is actually fairly easy. The noise will always lighten or darken a pixel from its true value by a small amount. Averaging lots of small increases and small de decreases in brightness should result in an average noise approaching zero, leaving us with only the true color. I used 26 image for my image. The next issue is the low resolution. Small objects like lines and edges are often significantly smaller than a pixel, and when a camera pans, objects move relative to the edge, not always by a full pixel amount. The way we eliminate this is by subdividing the pixels, which allows us to line up images with a level of precision four times that if we were using the raw pixels from the camera. This allows us to preserve and pull out additional detail that would not be visible with larger pixels. Lastly is a small amount of light reaching the rear wall of this image. Astronomers take pictures of very dim objects all the time. Stacking dozens of frames on top of each other provides you with more than enough light data to see the detail, even in very dark areas. Each time we add a new frame, we increase the color depth by each RGB value by a value of 255. This produces a high-resolution image with extreme color depth. I can then zoom in to particular parts and increase the contrast to pull out fine details. This is the highest detail image we have had before I did my processing. 
and this is the first image that I produce, so let's take a closer look at this area. I will address the four goals as I come to them. We will identify the unique features of this space, then at the end we will attempt to come to a reasonable hypothesis for all of it. What was immediately obvious when the camera entered the chamber were the unfinished quarry stones in the chevron ceilings, with the holes where logs were inserted to hold the stones up for in construction. This chamber is about 9 meters long and between 3 and 4 meters wide. This second image I produced is at a different angle and allows us to see that there are small dunes of dust on the floor directly under seams in the ceiling. I propose that these are piles of dust that have come down from between the beams and accumulated at a rate of about an inch every thousand years. Originally, I had thought this darker material along the seams of the chevrons was organic material. I thought water was seeping down between these blocks and allowing a small amount of algae to grow. I can see now overwhelmingly bright red color of these marks and can now identify them with great certainty that they are ochre paint construction lines. Strange considering they are on both sides of the blocks. Perhaps this is marks a place where the Severons had slipped. I believed this dark splotch was corroded copper, perhaps a tool that had gotten stuck or broken off in the stone at the quarry. If I zoom in on specifically this splotch, as well as the stone directly next to it, we should be able to tell whether or not there is an excess of green color, even if something looks entirely black to us. This is at zoom and spectra. You can ignore all of the tall yellow bands. These are an artifact from the fact that we zoomed so far there are too few pixels to fill out the histogram. But from this, I can tell that the dark splotch appears to have the same color as the rest of the stone, just way darker for some reason. There is no evidence of a green hue, unlike the red ochre marks, which were very obvious. I did this analysis for every individual stone, getting a color-balanced histograms that can be compared. Remember, we have no way to determine true color. We can only determine colors relative to each other, because we can't know the lighting and camera conditions. You can find the full-scale image of everything I'm posted on the Reddit thread that I've linked below. This huge beam across the chamber floor is one of the most mysterious parts. I can use deep color depth to compare the color of this stone to the color of the nearby ones, which we can assume are limestone. We notice that in lighter areas there is an excess of red signal, but in darker areas it looks nearly identical to the limestone. This can be explained by a thin layer of limestone dust over granite. Thin enough that the bright parts facing the camera and the light are opaque and let us see the granite underneath, where dark parts and more oblique angles capture the dust layer. This stone is indeed granite. You can even plainly see a red hue with your eyes in this image. Finally, the rear wall. Frustratingly, the endoscopic camera's focal length appears to be set in the middle of this room, so the back wall is always out of focus. Stacking can't really help with that, so I used another astronomer's trick called Lucky Shot to get the highest quality of detail. For example, there is clearly a pr stone protruding here, which is centered in the wall with smaller ones surrounding it. I've flipped through enough frames to be confident that this is the true shape of the rear wall. It has similar structure to the Principium in the front, but different enough to not be the same. Perhaps these spaces were once used to hold logs, perhaps they were decorative. The smaller stones on each side, I believe, are cut into the stone behind them, but the central piece is its own stone. It also appears to be damage on the left side. So what can we make of all this? Let's look at some popular theories. Firstly, was this an entranceway? We are certain the pyramids were renovated at least once and maybe twice. Could this have once been an entrance, either for worshippers or workers? I do not believe that there is evidence for that. The fact that the walls are unfinished indicate that this was never meant to be seen by dignitaries. Furthermore, the giant beam in the ground eliminates the possibility of, of workers moving anything heavy through it. It's also on the wrong side of the pyramid to receive anything from the quarry, which was to the south. So it wasn't an entranceway, so perhaps it was a relieving chamber. Chevrons relieve weight, so this is just a relieving chamber of something hidden underneath it. We know the main corridor goes underneath it. We also know that the builders were aware that slippage happened within the passage of the Bent Pyramid, so perhaps this was to prevent it. Promising, but when it comes to the main passage, the slippage in the Bent Pyramid would not have not happened if there was a relieving chamber. 
the entire side of the pyramid settled, and a relieving chamber would have simply moved with it. Nor does it extend very far. The north passage is less than 10 meters in depth, where the main passage is over 100. It's also too high to really distribute load from the passageway, so there could be something between the passageway and the quarter, perhaps there is something like the vertical shaft of the trial chambers. Again, it does not appear to be so. If there was a chamber there, the Scan Pyramids team surely would have spotted it. They had done extensive scans of this area just to verify their discovery before they were even allowed to put a camera through. Could it have been dummy architecture? Perhaps it was not closed off in the Old Kingdom and the casing stones in the chevrons were New Kingdom, but again, no. There is no evidence that the chevrons currently covering the front of the passage were are not original. Furthermore, as I already mentioned, the walls have not even started to be finished. These seem to have come straight from the quarry with no workers touching their faces. That doesn't leave us with much, though luckily I do have one final theory, though admittedly it has flaws and I will point them out. I propose that it is a weight-relieving chamber and a test site. Wait, didn't I just say it was not this? It absolutely is not relieving weight. But neither are these in the king's chamber. We have to separate the actual physics at play here from what the Egyptians thought the laws of physics were. I believe, and will show with evidence, that the Egyptians thought that there was a force being distributed down the slope of the pyramid. To be clear, I'm not calling the ancients dumb, they were as intelligent as us, but acquisition of knowledge is a cumulative process, and the old kingdom is so long ago that even Archimedes was a millennia off. In these structures, designed by the famous Imhotet, he placed stone supports next to his columns simply because he wasn't sure that a freestanding column could support itself, which of course it can. They didn't get this belief in a parallel to the slope force from nowhere either. It came from experience. In both the Bent and Maydoom Pyramid, there really are enormous forces running down the face of the pyramid, and I believe the Egyptians misunderstood where this force was coming from. Both of those pyramids have their outer casings angled slightly. This means that each block really is supporting the one above it and has an outward pressure on it from above and an inward one from below. This does not happen with flat courses of masonry, which may be why they switched to flat courses for the Red Pyramid. By the time the Great Pyramid was being planned, the Bent and Maydoom Pyramids would have already been showing signs of problems, and while the Red would have not, they may have been unsure whether it was because they fixed the problem or if it was simply the newest one. I believe the tilted chevrons were meant to alleviate that slope force, and this entire chamber was designed to test whether or not the chevron idea would even work at full scale. It was not intended to test a queen's chamber, as the king's chamber was still intended to be the primary burial location. These were both tests of the chevron, and if they had failed, the king's chamber would have been reverted to a corbelled ceiling instead, which is why it's so tall. The chamber was made long enough to have multiple reference frames and allow checking for slippage continuously as courses were laid over top of it. This is why there is a random granite beam in the back, too. I'd bet my hat there is an empty space underneath it, just barely big enough that it's free-floating, allowing the architects to know for sure whether or not the beam could stand. This is why the walls jut outwards here, too. The king's chamber is wider than this chamber, and they needed to be tested at full span. If we look at the rear wall of this passage, I believe the two extrusions on the side are carved from the blocks behind them, but there is an obvious stone right in the middle of the wall. This block is a full course in height, but much narrow. I propose that it is a blocking stone and has a shape that allows it to be pulled in and tipped up to allow a tunnel behind it to be sealed. As though I'm the first person to see this block placed, I humbly hope it becomes Wallace's stone. I believe that there is a tunnel going through the entire structure from this block. It continues all the way to the top of the well shaft where in my previous video I suspected a tunnel described by pairing is blocked. This is not a proper passage, the walls would not be smoothed or have any structural support. The blocks of masonry were simply not pushed flush up against each other here, leaving just enough room for a man to squeeze through. The passage this size does not require one to do anything special with the blocks above it as long as they straddle the tunnel. 
Why put the test here? Because until the pharaoh died, infrastructure needed to be placed at the north entrance no matter what, because he would eventually be entombed there. This video was more technical than what I intend for this channel going forward, but the original software that I created had to be understood to be confident in my results. Respectively discuss my theories in the comments, like and subscribe to Wallace's Mysteries of Antiquity to continue exploring mysteries of our danced ancestors.